God bless you, everyone. We thank God for another day. We thank God for you. We appreciate all of you. God bless you. Today we come again to Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to talk about the spirit of pride. How pride can bring one low to nothing. From high position to nothing. But before we go there, we're going to pray a quick prayer of faith. If you are sick, if you are going through in any way, if you are down, if you are discouraged, we're going to pray for you that the Lord touch you. That is, pray the mighty Holy Spirit touch you right now and give you strength and raise you up. So let's go to the throne of grace. And let's pray for our country. Our, ways. our country needs prayer. We need a lot of prayer in this country right now, especially election time. That God might help us to make a right vote. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Though you be so high and good and great, Lord Jesus, we could come to you. We could call upon your name, God. He said you call upon you in the day of trouble. Lord, we are living in troubled time, God. So we are praying for our country. We are praying for America, Lord. We are praying for all our leaders, God. Everyone in authority, God. That you might touch their heart to do what is right, Lord, God. In our city, Lord. In our town. All around us, Lord. There's trouble on every side, God. But we lift up our voice to you in prayer, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, that you might bless America again, Lord. And make it great again. And we are praying for all those, Lord Jesus, our election coming up soon. We are praying for our leaders. We are praying for our president, vice president, Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon them, Lord God, our senators and congressmen and women. Lord, every authority, Lord, we lift them up before you, God, that you might touch the heart, touch the mind, God, draw them back into the straight and narrow way, God. Show them the way to go, Lord God. Some don't know, God, so we lift them up in prayer right now. Our judges, God, making decisions, God. Some of them living in fear, God. We are praying them through. And we thank you for hearing our prayer for all our authority, our police department, Lord. We are praying to send some more good police, Lord, in the force. Lord, we thank you for all our emergency workers, Lord God, bless them, our doctors, our nurses, God, we are praying them through, Lord, and most of all, our military, Jesus, wherever they are right now, we're praying a blessing upon them right now, God, you might strengthen them and shelter them, oh God, put a shield of protection around them right now, oh God, Jesus, all of them, Lord, Jesus, those who are sick right now, they'll retire right now, God, Touch the heart, Lord God. So are down and broken. We ask to God to fix the broken hearted right now, God. And those who are sick in the body listening right now, we are praying for the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Touch your body wherever you need healing in your body right now. God is able. There's nothing that God didn't care about in your body. He care about every aspect of your life. And we are praying for the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Touch your body right now and make you whole in Jesus' name. And if you believe God with me, just give him a praise. The victory is in the praise. God is able to heal and to strengthen you financially, spiritually, and physically. In Jesus' name. And now we're going to go back to Ezekiel chapter 28 and chapter 1. We see here a proud ruler, a proud leader, pride. We come again to talk about the spirit of pride. Last time I didn't tell you enough about pride. And Satan behind the spirit of pride. And when Satan is behind a leader, how are they going to fall? Because they blaspheme God so much time that they fall. This is a blasphemous leader. This, this tire was a place in Lebanon, 50 miles from the city of Lebanon. It's in ruin right now. Some places are so cursed with so much things that they never rise up again. Too much evil upon God's hurt. Ezekiel 28 and 1. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus say the Lord God, because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am God. I sit in the seat of gods, of gods. In the heart of the sea. Yet you are but a man and no God. Though you make your, your heart like the heart of God. 
small g this is the spirit of pride is is satan behind these leaders yes you know when a man going to blaspheme against god this is a blasphemous leader if you have a country and have a blasphemous leader can you imagine what the country is like a leader that ruled by satan that satan is behind this leader this ruler he didn't say it's a god he said god see the spirit of god is in him because they worship so much different god and pride you know they don't worship the god of heaven they worship the god of man hand this man is so lifted up in pride that he said he demands worship because he makes himself God. Who is behind this but Satan? He allows Satan to come in, he opens the door for Satan to come in and possess him. He has a spirit in him. Tell him that he's God speaking to him. He allows Satan to speak to him. Now Satan is, you know, his have his shown set up everywhere. And there are some wicked demons that come out of heaven. And we're going to see, when we get to Ezekiel 11, we're going to see how these demons fall from heaven. How these satanic demons fall from heaven. How Satan was such a beautiful cherub. With, with covering. It's just like in the whole testament, in the cherubim, he was one of them. Their wings cover the holy place. It was so beautiful with all the beautiful diamonds and pearls and all of this wonderful covering. You know, it was covered with all of these sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, oxen, sapphire, hemorrhoid, and all of these beautiful covering. This stone was in the breastplate of the high priest in, in, in the Old Testament. He got all of these stones as his covering. He was so bright and shiny angel, a crown of glory. He was, a, he was one of the morning glory, the main one of the morning glory. In Job 37, Jesus asked Job, were you there when the morning glory sings? That means it's before the foundation of the earth. They were in heaven. They were the morning glory. And Satan was the leader. He had all the instrument building him, flute, piano, saxophone, everything was. He could just open his mouth and every, all of those things come out of him. And it was a beautiful covering for the holy place. It was a cherubim. It was, it was so great in heaven and mighty. God gave him all that power. It was a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord. He was in heaven. But just like this king of Tyre, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to sit in God's place. He wanted to be God. He was already on the mountain of God, but he wanted to sit in the seat of God, in the temple of God. It was not just the covering for the holy place. He wanted to sit in the holy place. He wanted to be called God. You have, you have the highest place in heaven already. What more do you want? Never satisfied. Pride never satisfied. So when Satan was cast down to heaven, a third of the angel, Revelation chapter 12, a third of the angel, you know, the heaven of Billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of angels. Uh, can you imagine one third of the angels cast down to hurt? These are the spirits that dwell in the children of disobedient. These are the spirits that dwell in the... Satan have his throne upon his hurt too. And he monitor these things. And you got some wicked demon. Some of them is so wicked they have to be cast into a pit. Until the second half of the tribulation, God let them out upon the earth to kill and to torture. To torture so many with swords, with every evil, wicked things and starvation. Where they must be punished because they take the mark of the beast. Those are the times when those satanic 
plagues will be upon the earth terrible tribulation like never before you know so many people don't want to preach about revelation but i'm here to tell you about revelation because these things are real upon the earth when the first part of the tribulation the church will be gone the church have to face some tribulation too but when the first six chapter or whatever the church will be gone we're going to face some but not the half or second half of the tribulation. They're going to be saints and hurt, winning souls, as we're going to see. But these satanic power, they're going to be loose in the tribulation. But this Prince of Tyre here, he was a blasphemous leader. Allow Satan to possess him and call himself God. He evil. He said, because your heart was so proud, you have said, I am God. I sit in the seat of a God, in the heart of the sea. You know, I have everything I need. I'm in a beautiful place. I have all the diamonds and everything here. I'm prosperous. This city is prosperous. <coughs> and I will let how does worship me? <coughs> Sorry, you got to worship him. He, he demands worship from the people. The people who rule under him, he demands them to bow down and worship him. A blasphemous satanic leader. If he blasphemed God, this is one sin that man did that is not going to be forgiven. If you blaspheme and said you're God. For this reason, many, are, many have died because they blaspheme God. Ezekiel 29 and 3, Pharaoh blasphemed God and he died. Herod Acts 12 and 23, he blasphemed God and said he's God. He was arrayed in beautiful garment and they call him God and he take God praise and said, yes, I'm God. He was suddenly eaten by a worm and just eaten by a worm until he died. That's harmful for a king. Daniel 3, 15 and, and 4, 30. Nebuchadnezzar, the moment he said, this is my Babylon, what I built, and started to lift up himself. He loses his mind for seven years. He has to go out in the garden and eat. His nails grow long, his toenails grow long. He hit grass with the animal, become an animal. His ears was locked out there for seven years. Until one day he looked up in the heaven and said, Oh, that's God up there, that God that made the sun and the rain. The Jew of heaven fall on him for seven years. Until he come to himself and start give God some glory. Well, God is merciful. He never let him die. There's something in Nebuchadnezzar that God see that he could use for his glory. But his pride may bring him low from being a world leader to eating grass like animal, crawl on his hands and his knees, eating grass, eating the things of the hurt, just like animal. But this king here, he said, Yet, but you're a man. Though you make your heart like a god. Verse 3. You indeed think you're wiser than Daniel. Yes, I am wiser than Daniel. And he started demanding worship. I'm wiser than the wisest man. Daniel was a humble man of God. But this one was terrible. And he gathered gold and silver and treasures. I got them all. I got, this, I got wisdom. I can use them. And people come to me and buy. I got everything. I can relax now. I'm a God. And they come to me to worship. You know, this is what God said. Moreover, he said, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man. You know, you know, God said, son of man, the king of Tyre, say to him, say to him, say to him, the God, the Lord. Say to him, the Lord. Thus said the Lord. You have signaled perfection Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in heed in the garden of God. Every precious stone were yours covering. You know, why say to the man, the king that? 
You were in the garden. There was Satan. He's possessed by Satan. You talking to Satan. He gave his life over to Satan. He don't want the God of heaven. So say to him, talk to him like Satan. Deal with him like Satan. He's a blasphemer. In, his name is not written in the book of life. Like Satan, his name is not written in the book of life. When he was caught out of heaven, he was doomed forever. Many today worship Satan. And they want to be in hell with Satan forever. If you ever heard about hell is, Jesus said he's not willing that any should go there. Where the fire burn at night. Never cease to burn. And the worm die at night. And yet no water. And yet no peace. And it's forever. So say to this man. You are possessed with Satan. You are satanic. You talk like Satan. You act like Satan. This Satan was in the garden of God. He was beautiful. And you were there afterward, after you fall from heaven, you were there in the garden with Adam and Eve and caused them to sin. You use a serpent. Satan is like a serpent because he's used the serpent body. And because of that, the serpent were walking on some feet. They fall off, now he crawl on his body. Satan is everywhere in the ocean. Satan moves like a alligator slow. And ready to grab someone and put them into hell. If you're not careful. He's a serpent. He's like a alligator. He's awful. He's a dragon. But when you call upon the name of the Lord. He will open up your eyes and see Satan before he gets you. He said you are God. You are God. You were in the garden of Eden. You were in the, in the presence of God. Every precious stone where you're covering. And these precious stones were in the breastplate of the high priest in the Old Testament. And you're covering, your wings were the covering of the holy place in heaven. Your wings were the covering of the holy place in the Old Testament. The holies of holies. You represent that. You are high and lifted up. You were great in heaven. Your name was great. But from the moment you step out and said, I want to be God, your power is broken. Satan, your power is broken at Calvary. And it came to hurt. And many people allow Satan to use them. Many people said, it's children, homes, family, divorce. That's where Satan used the family. He break up family. He break up children from their parents. He caused young people to be homosexual. He caused young girls to cut off their breasts and say they're homosexual. He caused some to become prostitute. That's what he does. He caused some to say, I'm gay. But men, if you ever know the power that God gave you to have children, if you know the power that God gave you to plant a seed upon the earth, you will turn from your wicked ways and turn to God. Because God gave us something special. Use it for God's glory. He said, you were in the garden of Eden. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbonacra, crafted in gold with your they were shiny. They were shiny things. Diamonds, shiny. Come on, like a dark green and beautiful color. Can you imagine how shiny Satan was in heaven? How beautiful. And there's still some morning glory in, 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 the, in heaven. There's still some there. But Satan was a third part of the angel on earth, causing us to sin. Causing people to become something else. Causing so many to be in hell right now. Causing so many to blaspheme God. You know, it's, these people don't want Jesus. Some people out there don't want Jesus. Some people don't want to hear about God. But you don't have to hear, you've got to know. Just look up. Psalm 19. 
the heaven declare the glory of God. And the firmament up there declare the glory. Day unto day they hold a speech. Night unto night they show knowledge. They show day, they show night. They show winter, season, cloudy day, sunny day, night turning to day. Who can turn night into day but God? Satan do not have that power. He only have that power when we give him power to possess what the devil get from you is what you give him. Because if you call, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. Because Satan's still busy upon the earth. From the moment a child is born, before they're born, you got to pray for them. Because from the moment they cry upon his hurt, from the moment they inhale upon his hurt, they inhale the sin of this hurt, you got to start praying for them. That the power of God might remain in them, might, that they might not turn to the devil, they might not turn to sin and blasphemous ways like this leader here. This leader here called himself God. The Bible says, you shall have no other God beside me. And those who are rich upon this earth, some of them believe that they are better off than a poor person. They are better off than another color, another nation. Because you got money, you got yacht, you got plane, you got everything. You got nothing. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. Is Jesus or nothing the Bible said if you haven't got the Spirit of God in you, you are none of His. If you have another God beside Jesus, you are none of His. If you deny the name Jesus, Yahweh, and all of those names in the Old Testament, they were kind of silent. But since Jesus came into my heart, all those names become Jesus. There is no other name given among men. Why well, you should be saved with the name of Jesus. You can lift up in pride as you like. We were all born from clay and dust. You are nothing but clay. You might look good. You might wear the best clothes. But we are clay in the hands of God. That he can mold us and make us into something fit for the kingdom of heaven. You're not better off than anyone because you're rich. Because you live in a better house. Is that right? God said he makes some rich and some poor. He made some rich so he could help the poor. Some people haven't got the wisdom of this hurt to do things for themselves or, or the strength. And some people who are weak in the flesh and the born weak and God put you there to help. Thank God for those who help the poor and needy. Thank God to remember those people who have nothing to help. Who are going through devastation and need help. Are sick and need help. God put you there because you are rich. Remember the rich fool in the book of Luke? He said I am going to make bigger storehouses because I have increasing goods. I want to store them up. What am I storing up for? Give to the poor. So he came to Jesus. And Jesus said. Give, sell all you got and give to the poor. And he was upset because he was rich. What is he saving them for? God gave us to distribute evenly. How to put in the stock market, make investment. Where we store it up and think we are better off. That is spirit of pride. When the devil was cast out of heaven because of pride, he wanted to sit in the place of God. Pride. Proverbs chapter 6. The, the, the seven things that God ate. The first one was the spirit of pride. A heart that lifted up. A heart that speaking vanity. A heart that boastful and hateful and lustful. The devil is the spirit of pride. He's behind the spirit of pride. He's the king of pride. He lifted up. Pride will bring a man low. Pride will bring a person down from being high and have everything to a piece of dry bread, to one suit of clothes on your back, to no shoes on your foot until you repent. You can bring down, I don't care how much you have. 
Sickness come. Perilous time come. Burn up your riches. And you have nothing. Unless you have Jesus, you are nothing. He is the only way to eternal life. There's no other name. <clears throat> Give me among men where you should be saved. But in the name of Jesus, every knee going to bow. <clears throat> Whether you're in hell, every knee shall bow. Are you hurt? And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you don't confess Jesus here, you, when, you see G, when you go to hell, you go and confess him. But it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Now it's the accepted time. Therefore, he said, you know, the Lord, because you make your heart like the heart of a God, therefore, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you and the most ruthless of the nation. And they shall draw their sword against your beauty and wisdom and defile your splendor. At the same moment, Nebuchadnezzar came in and destroyed this man and strip him beer and bring him down to nothing. Pride will bring a man low to nothing. And if Nebuchadnezzar take him and make a slave out of him and kill him. Pride. Where did he end up in hell? Because he blasphemed God. The sinner blasphemed. You will never get to heaven if you blaspheme God. And he was sitting on that chair and blasphemed God. So God sent somebody wicked and more than him and take all his riches and kill him. God. Only God can make somebody great. Only God can fill you with the Holy Spirit. And when you feel with the Holy Spirit and know who Jesus is, you become humble. Humble yourself at the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. Only God can exalt you and put your name in heaven. Like Jesus. God exalted Jesus. When he, after his death, he exalted, after his humiliation upon his earth, he exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. He must bow to the name of Jesus. If Jesus can humble himself to come to this earth as a man to die for sin, how much are we to humble ourselves at the mighty hands of God? Don't let Satan rule over your life. Don't let Satan take your children. Pray for your children every day while they go to school. Stand with your line girded about with truth. Because the days are evil. Because when you stop praying and stop looking to God and when you think not, the devil comes right into your home, right into your marriage. He's a marriage breaker. He's a covenant breaker. He's a lying wonder. He's a thief like Jezebel. He's a thief. He creep into the church. He creep behind the pulpit. The devil is there too. You got to be careful. He's behind the choir. He's sitting in the audience. You got to cast him out by prayer and fasting. Unless we pray and humble ourselves in fasting, the devil come right and creep up in your life and creep in your marriage, into your children, into your home, into your job, into your boss. That's why the Bible says we have to pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean we have to always on our knees. But in all we're doing, remember God. Remember God in everything you do. Put him first in everything we do. God first. God don't ask for too much of us. But if you humble yourself at the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. Satan can't exalt you. He will exalt you for a moment. He exalt many and draw them away from Christ. And make them something. Make them dancers and nudists and prostitute that's all they will do and give them money and show them money god have better thing god have greater things for you when you humble yourself at the mighty hand of god will exalt you and give your name upon this hurt you know there's something about being humble when you humble yourself at the mighty hands of god he can use you for his glory if you are praying to the Lord, 
I'm a prostitute. I'm a homosexual. And, and I want to come over from this Lord. Those demonic power will hold you so tight that you can't come out from among them. But if you keep praying and keep going to God and seeking the face of the Lord, He will deliver you. There's no sin that God will forgive. But blasphemous leaders like this, there's no forgiveness for those lifting up in pride every day. We all need to repent of the sin of pride. Every one of us comes short of God's glory. In our thought, in our thinking, search ourselves and see if we have that sin of pride in us. The devil will try to lead us and guide us, but we need the mighty power of God to lead and to guide and to give us divine instruction. We don't need this pride. We don't need the spirit of pride. Satan, have all of this power. God gave him power for this earth, but it's limited power. Once you confess Jesus Christ and you walk faithfully with him, he's going to come to knock you down. Jesus was tempted too. He said there's no temptation taking you. That God would not make a way of deliverance. He, he, he tempts Jesus in the wilderness and said, command these stones to be made bread if you are God. Because the flesh the Bible said it was made lower for a little time, a little lower than the angel. And he said, command this stone to be made bread if you are any God. God said, get behind me, Satan. Using the intelligent word of the scripture. Man shall not, in Deuteronomy, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We have to rebuke Satan. He gave us the power to rebuke him. Command his tongue to make bread, the son of God, because he was in the flesh. When he got power over the devil, they could destroy him right away. But there's a reason why God didn't destroy him right away. So we thank God sometimes, you know. Sometimes, you know, when the devil tries to knock on us and step on our heels, give us more strength to pray, we reach out to God. Sometimes you might be going through something right now. All of us going through financial situation sometimes sickness or something marriage divorce but it makes us stronger and jesus is saying be strong in the lord and in this power of his might put on the whole armor of god turn to god in prayer seeking the faith of the lord sometimes you pray and it seems like it's tough because the devil come to prayer too the devil make you afflicted so much that you can't even pray. But it's a call upon me in the day of trouble and see if I will not answer you. Sometimes you're so afflicted till you can't pray. You just have to call Jesus. He knows you, know where you are. He's touched by your infirmities. He's touched by your pain. He knows you, you cry. Like as a father to his children. He knows your cry. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you're going through. But beware. Don't let yourself uncover. Cover yourself with prayer and the word of God. You're made strong and able to rebuke those challenges of the enemy. He's going to challenge you. He's going to, he's going to come to challenge you. If he challenge Jesus, he'll do it to you too. But Jesus said, we not fear what the enemy can do. Because he said, behold, I give you power. He gave it so much power in Luke 10 and 19 when he sent his disciples out there. He said, I give you power to tread upon all the powers of the enemy, to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the powers of darkness, over the rulers of darkness. You got the Holy Ghost power. Use it and endeavor. Use the intelligent word of the scripture. Use Psalm 91 of the scripture. Because you dwell in the secret place of the most high. No matter how you feel, you are his child and he cares. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So what the enemy do is, limit, is limited. Satan power is limited by God upon this earth. But we are going through a time of testing now. And the church is going through some times. And it seems to me like sometimes some church get weak. But it's time to put on the old armor of God and be strong in the Lord. Strengthen that what is weak. The Bible said right now... And, in, 
in the other scripture in their title, strengthen what is weak. If you are weak, be strengthened, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God, put on the word of God, put on power, put on Holy Ghost power. Seek the Lord and his strength. You're going to feel spiritually weak sometimes, but you are stronger than you think. You are stronger than you think. And today if you are weak, if you are in a backsliding condition, if you are going through some tests and trials, be strong. Turn to the word of God. Because he said he never leave and never forsake you. You have to stand strong on the word. He said I will instruct you and lead you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. That's what like a good father would do. Better than a father. A hurtly father. Because some father don't take care of the children. But Jesus does. He cares about every aspect of your life. Today you might not be saved. Today you might be going through some things. And you know, so maybe the police are looking for you. Maybe you're on drugs. Right? You feel like you can't get delivered. Maybe you're in a place where you think God forgets you. And if you want to turn back to God, if you're in a backsliding condition, if you want to be saved, if you want to have a hope of eternal life, I'm going to pray for you right now. If you will repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me, Lord. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free from this condition what I'm facing right now. Only you can deliver, Lord. I come to you, Lord. Come into my heart. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord Jesus. Deliver me, Lord. I need deliverance. Have mercy upon me. I was once walking with you, Lord. But no, Lord Jesus, because I'm homosexual, Lord, I don't know what to do with my life. Come into my heart. Deliver me, Lord. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I live in fornication with my companion. Come into my heart. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to have this hope of eternal life. Come into my heart. And if you just pray that prayer, God is able to deliver you. But you must turn to him from sin. You must make a turn. Start taking your Bible and grab the Bible and start to read. Mark, Luke, John. And you see Jesus. God is able. He's willing to save you from all unrighteousness. And to write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. God bless you. And I hope one day I'll see you in heaven. Thank you, Pastor Carter.